This is from my 79 model, it's a BS38 carb. And the reason I'm making this uh, short video is just simply to see if I can help anybody with uh, any problems they might have with the floats and the float chamber and um, flooding. It can be a problem with these carbs, they're very crude. Now what I found with mine, um, after having a few problems with them flooding, is that I found that even though I measured very carefully and accurately that they were at the correct height, which for this particular carburetor is 24 millimeters, um, the actual pivot that these are held in by, which goes through there and holds them in, and the holes that the pivot pin goes through are very loose and sloppy, and so there was quite a lot of play in the floats, which resulted in too much tolerance. The Yamaha handbook suggests 2 millimeters plus or minus, so if you're measuring for 24 millimeters to the top of the float from the gasket surface, which is here of course, not on the top part, um, generally it's easiest to use a steel rule like this, you don't measure from the top there, that flange, you measure where the gasket goes, which is just beneath that, and you measure to the top of the floats. Um, and it should be 24 millimetres plus or minus 2 millimetres. Well, some of the slop in my floats was so huge that it was probably a plus or minus figure of 3 to 4 mil, which would mean that that um, accuracy was completely lost. So in practice what happens is when you invert it, and you've got the float chamber on obviously, the floats weren't shutting off where they were supposed to. Um, it was actually flooding from time to time. And if you get a bit of crud in the float chamber, um, from petrol or something um, and it gets past the filters then that can aggravate the situation by getting into the float needle valve jet. So just a quick brief resume of what I've managed to do on mine. First of all this is the float needle jet and this one is marked 2, two that's 2 millimetres um, and to clean that out what I generally use is I use jet um, gauges and these are all numbered and as it's a 2 mil, that would um, be probably one on this side, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2 mil, there we are and that would be what I generally use to clean this, it's extremely accurate. You can use a veneer gauge to check these, make sure that they are accurate um, and then you can very carefully clean the crud out of them, especially when you get residue from petrol. The other way you can do it if you haven't got these gauges is you can use drill bits. These drill bits are very cheap. I get them from China in packs of 10. Again you need to check them with a the veneer gauge to make sure that that is actually 2mm and not something slightly off. These are actually 1.9 um, and you can see that it's slightly sloppy in there. I have got some 2 mil somewhere. But again, they're quite useful for cleaning out jets. So I know that's clean now, so what I do is I fit that quickly. Tight. I mean it's just brass, you don't want to put your strength into that, it will just shear or, or um, ruin the threads. Now the needle valve itself uh, has a spring in the top, make sure that that's still working obviously, that it's still got a bit of spring in it. I've cleaned this out and so I know it's okay, I've looked under uh, a magnifying glass to check the end of it to make sure that it's not got a ridge in it anywhere and you can generally feel that if, if there was one with your finger now or see it but this one's fine so pop that in obviously now when it comes to the floats themselves what you need to check is that they are level with the brackets so that the bracket is level with the tops of the floats and the way to best do that is to use a ruler so you put a ruler on the bracket itself and then it's just difficult to do with the camera at that angle but basically you can then check 
that float that both tops of each float are parallel with the bracket itself so that therefore you know that the pin will be parallel with the tops of the two floats. If one is slightly higher than the other then you'll need to adjust that and there's only one way to do that you need to hold it with a pair of pliers and adjust very gently. These are stuck on with this just soft solder um, and you definitely don't want to try and use your hands to move, to bend them if you can help it because then you'll bend the bracket and possibly even shear off the solder and that's going to be a bit of a job to, to put back on. So what I'd recommend is if you need to do any adjustments on this is to use pliers with a good keen edge um, and bend them that way not try and use your hands. So the other thing I checked is that when I put these on previously um, you need to obviously get it out the right way. If you get it out that way then it's going to hit the, uh, the valve, the, uh, the needle jet there and uh, will bind so it won't shut off properly. So it needs to be up the correct way. If the flange itself, there the tang that actually rests on the needle jet there if that's at a wrong angle then you can get undue pressure on one side of this valve so when it actually closes off it will press the valve to one side of the chamber of the jet and will stick and there'll be some binding and that will actually stop it shutting off properly so ideally you need to make sure that the tang is horizontal with the bracket either side of it so if you start off in that position and then put them in like that then you can check to see that the tops of both of the um, floats are level and that is easily done with a straight ruler like this, a straight edge when you actually got them fitted and you can obviously see whether or not they are level. These are because I've actually um, adjusted mine so that they are level but that is very important. It's no good adjusting one to the correct dimension and then finding the other one is two millimeters or three millimeters out. They both need to be identical and you really need to do that before you um, fit them. Now let's just get this out again. Now another thing that you need to do is to check to see, before I take this out, check to see how much play there, are, there is in the pivot itself. Now I check both in that plane and up and down. And you can see there is a fair bit of play but not excessive. If there's considerable play in the pivots there then what will happen is that when you adjust that to 24mm the plus and minus will actually be 3 or 4 or 5 millimeters, possibly and obviously again that will be out of adjustment. So that's very important. What I've done on mine to compensate for that because they are a bit worn. Let's get this pivot pin out. was right in the way here, yeah. right, is I've checked with the a pivot pin first, I've put it through the holes here and it's very easy to see that there is a lot of play in the holes and whether you're able to see that in this light, that's not very good there's a lot of play there in that pivot and that's not ideal probably that might have worn uh, it could possibly have been quite loose in the beginning when they were made. It could be possible to drill those out to inline bore them and sleeve them with a little brass bush or something to tighten it up or possibly a new pin might help. But I'm just going to leave that as it is and I don't think it's excessive. But what I'm going to do to compensate for that is I'm actually going to adjust this float so that it fits tightly to the pivot so there's no slack on that. So as you can see this is quite stiff to push through that pivot now. And when you get hold of it there's very little movement. There's virtually none. So what I've done is I've I've used a pair of pliers 
to pinch this in slightly, very carefully. It's just brass, soft brass, both sides, until the, the pivot pin is a tight press fit, which it is. In fact, it needs pliers to put it in and out. Now, what that does is it compensates for how much slack there is in this pivot system and tightens up the float pivot. Now this might seem a lot of work to go to, but what I've actually achieved now is that those floats have got very little play in them. From up and down, if I get hold of it and just adjust it, I would say there's probably about one and a half millimetres there now, which is well within tolerance of two mil, plus or minus two mil. And all of that is in basically in the pivot there, which if I get up close and get the light on it, you might be able to just see that. Oh, that really needs pushing out. But anyway, I think that's going to be sufficient. But that's how I've achieved it. That's how I've tightened it up. If this is sloppy all over the place in the pivot here, then you're never going to get an accurate measurement on these floats. And if you don't get an accurate measurement, it's never going to shut off the fuel properly. So, what I'll do now is, I'll measure from the base where the gasket sits to the top of the float and that's about 30 mil so I'm going to have to adjust that quite a bit. Now the normal way of doing that is just to bend the tang here so that it comes up more so that the floats settle down more and it will then measure hopefully 24 millimeters. But you don't want to bend the tang too much so that it's then at an extreme angle because then it will be applying pressure on the side of the needle valve which is not what you want. So you could bend the tang while it's in the carb, but I'm going to do it while it's out. It's more easy to get to. I'm just going to bend that up just very slightly. Again, it's probably best to hold the bracket with a pair of pliers. so fiddly. It always takes a lot longer when you're trying to demonstrate on a camera when you're doing it without the camera. For some reason it goes much quicker and easier. All right. See that's now quite tight on that pivot and it's free to move very freely because this, uh, the holes are enlarged in the actual um, pegs that hold the pivot. So basically that's what you do. You just need to adjust the tang until that's accurate. At 24 millimeter to the top of the float which is still way too high and it needs to be the same both ends so you need to make sure that you measure it very accurately both ends or sight along it and make sure that they are the same height. The other thing you need to do is just to rest the float on the needle jet. You don't want to make any undue pressure on that at all otherwise it will give you an inaccurate measurement. Right, and that's it. Once you've got those at the right height and there's not too much play in the pivot, then that should shut off nicely, uh, consistently, without flooding. Okay, I hope that's helpful to someone. I know it seems a bit anal, but I've had quite a bit of trouble with this myself and I, I read it on the forums that a lot of other people have had um, intermittent flooding of their carb or just leaking um, while they're running. and that's one way to actually reduce the chances of that. It's just to try and tighten up that pivot until there's very little play in it. It moves freely but there's not too much up and down and side to side movement. The more of that you can eliminate, the more accurate that's going to be at shutting off. I hope that's helpful to somebody.